Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we are back with our Misfortune Updated Complete Guide for, of course, patch 4.2. Well, I guess you can say 4.2a onwards, but I just normally just put 4.2 in the title. Anyways, um, don't forget to check out the basic guide that we released on Misfortune uh, before this one, of course, for the, for the skills, tips and tricks, combos, and leveling order. But anyways, let's jump straight into talking about Misfortune's loadout. So, I believe personally that this is the best build for Misfortune. I think the new Essence Reaver is really really strong on Misfortune. Basically, obviously it gives you ability haste crit as well as AD. Um, mana Siphon Passive helps you with the mana problems a little bit as well, but it's not too big of an issue because we're going for mana immune later on. Uh, but Essence Player, of course, uh, they haven't really updated this description, but on base level, when you get uh, Essence Reaver first, it starts off as 20% uh, bonus damage, and then it's going to slowly scale up with crit. So it becomes like your crit uh, your crit rate times a certain percent, and it goes all the way up to 30% maximum. So the fact that it starts off at 20% makes this an amazing uh, first item for champions who like to use it. Now, a small thing to take note of this is you don't want to use your E and then ultimate, because if not, the Essence Reaver will, will enhance your E instead of your ultimate. So you want to ult uh, without using your E, so you don't want to do that combo um, that I described in the basic guide. Then you go for Man Immune second. Now the reason why you go for Essence Reaver first is because this gives you an early game power spike, but when you get uh, Man Immune, of course it's going to take time to charge up, but when you eventually hit the, the uh, Mirror Mana, you're going to get, of course, increased basic attack damage, which is going to combo well with your passive, and in addition, it's going to also combo with Essence Reaver and your ultimate to enhance your ability damage. So that is, in my opinion, very, very amazing. And also, you get mana, which Misfortune is very, very mana hungry. So uh, I think uh, Mana Mute is a must-buy on Misfortune personally. Then uh, you get your boots, of course. Personally, I like Gluttonous Greaves because I feel that uh, you know getting the bit of healing is helpful. Of course, you can also go for Lucidity Boots or even Defensive Boots if you so prefer. And as your third item, you have to go for Zelda's Grudge. On MF, you cannot uh, not build Zelda's Grudge. You need it for the slow. And you need it uh, as your second or third item optimally. So third item, latest. So you have to go for Zelda's Grudge. Of course, AD Ability Haste, Armor Pen, but the IC Passive is what we're mainly going after, which of course will slow down uh, enemies caught in your ultimate. So you can just ult, get it enhanced by Mirror Man and Essence Reaver, get them slowed down and stuck in your ulti and just destroy them. And then personally, I actually prefer going for Crit MF. I think Lethality MF is, you know, if you want to go for Lethality, you have to go for like Yomus or like Collector as early, uh, early items. Uh, but of course, we already have Essence Reaver and Mana Mune, uh, as well as Sorellas in this slot. So I don't think there's a point in going for Lethality and, and all later on in the game. So I like to go for IE to get more damage, crit, as well as increased crit damage. This also is going to scale with uh, the Essence Reaver. And finally, I like to go for Bloodthirster. It gives you a huge chunk of AD uh, gain. Uh, more crit as well as a uh, physical vamp as well as the shield now of course this only puts you to 75% crit not 100% uh, but of course the Serelda's Grudge and the Mana Mune are essential to the build in my opinion so I think uh, not having 100% crit is absolutely fine okay so now for the runes you have two options uh, I personally like taking Conqueror of course for the life steal as well as the AD however you can also go for Kraken Slayer, because Kraken Slayer procs with your Q, your Q counts as an on hit, so your Q is going to actually proc the Kraken Slayer. Uh, for example, if you hit two enemies, that's two procs of Kraken Slayer, as in two stacks of Kraken Slayer on the third hit you're going to proc. Uh, if you jump, if you bounce from a minion to an enemy, it's going to give you one stack of Kraken Slayer, so it's going to work as well. But I think uh, Conquer is a little bit more consistent, so I choose to go from that. Domination, of course we go for the Hunter Vampirism, and of course Resolve, we go for Bone Plating or Perseverance if we if we need it. And of course, for the last one, Inspiration, we go for Mana Flow Ban, because before you get uh, Essence Reaver and Mana Mune, you're going to have a lot of mana issues in lane, and this is going to kind of try to prevent the mana issues from being too bad. And eventually, when you actually get Mana Mune, it's going to convert the mana into extra damage anyway, so you don't lose out on too much. And for the spells, Exhaust and Flash, I don't really think Ghost is, is good on Misfortune, and Exhaust is probably the only real viable spell you can get. I guess you could go for like Barrier uh, or, or something like that if you prefer, but Exhaust is normally the way to go. So all that out the way, let's jump into talking about our gameplay. 
Okay, so jumping straight into the gameplay, of course, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Okay, so of course, we're playing Misfortune, goes without saying, and we have a Seraphine with us. Misfortune Seraphine is actually a pretty uh, strong combo because Seraphine doesn't need to double cast her E with Mis Misfortune's uh, E. You can just cast it a single time because the enemy is already slowed by Misfortune and you can get a root instantly instead of having to double cast her E. So here you guys can see, uh, for some reason, the Sona walks up. Here you guys can see we already destroy her. Uh, here Ezreal flashes back, for some reason I exhaust him so he doesn't do damage. I try to actually bounce off my Q on the Ezreal to get the kill onto Sona but it doesn't really work. Either way we chunk out the Sona to the point that she has to recall and Ezreal is also pretty chunked out. Uh, we did trade Seraphine's health bar for it but Seraphine is going to be able to take the fruit whereas Sona has to back all the way and lose out on a lot of XP as well as a little bit of gold. So, uh, Misfortune, one of her strongest points is in lane, and you want to take advantage of her lane. So here you guys can see, again, I bounce the Q onto the Sona, and I auto-attack her. She's like at half HP already. After the uh, Misfortune buffs, it's, uh, her passive is not really, really strong, especially in lane. Uh, here, Sona gets rooted. Once again, I bounce onto Ezreal. You guys just take a look at that. Ezreal and Sona are both below half HP. Um, of course, the Sona healing is kind of going up a little bit. Here again, I bounce into Ezreal. He's left on 1 HP. We try to finish him off with uh, me and uh, Seraphine's E, but it doesn't quite work out. Uh, either way, we chunk him out of the lane. We're going to be able to take some plates. Sona is also trying to recall. Uh, we're just going to let her recall while we take the plate. So here you guys can see, I'm utilizing the tip that I pointed out in the... Uh, in the basic guide, which is I'm attacking the tower, then I'm attacking the minions, uh, which allows me to secure the last hit on the minions as well as to reset my passive onto the tower. And yeah, here, you know, not much more we can do, and we're gonna back. So, also take note of our mana bar. You can see that uh, our mana is not really too high, which is kind of the issue that I was pointing out, which is why mana flow ban is still a really important uh, rune to have. Uh, instead of going for any other rune, even though you're going for Essence Reaver and you're also going for uh, Mana Moon already. It's not going to be an issue in the later game, but in the early game, Mana is still going to be a big problem for Misfortune, so you still have to go for that Mana Full Ban. So, unfortunately, no real kills yet, but we did, we do, uh, we are able to zone them off goal and XP uh, from the minions, so uh, it's not too bad. We're chunking them out, but not actually killing them. Here we managed to bounce onto Sona again. When the bounce locks on, you cannot outrun it. Even if you flash or if you like uh, dash away, the, the bullet is still going to hit you after it locks on, which is what uh, why it hits Sona from so long range over there. And here again, we get the bounce into Sona. Seraphine manages to finish off the kill. Ezreal Arcane shifts unto, uh, under the tower. And here we're going to put a control rod into the river. Since we're playing really, really aggressive, uh, control warding our own bush doesn't really uh, matter all that much. Unfortunately though, the control ward is going to get spotted by the Kha'Zix, uh, who obviously is now in the area. So here, uh, honestly it's not too big of a deal. Seraphine wards the bush, so Kha'Zix now thinks that bush is not warded, uh, but in reality, we just put a normal ward in the bush since the control ward ran out. So here again, we're just trying to get plates and tower damage, uh, taking advantage of the fact that, you know, Sona's not in lane. Now, Sona is back. Kha'Zix is uh, kind of hovering in the bush, thinks that he's not seen. So here, notice what me and Seraphine are doing, which is we're not just backing off under tower and making it obvious that we know he's there. Right? We're still playing, uh, we're not playing aggressive, but we're keeping him interested. So here, we're just wasting his time. Kha'Zix now goes over to the tri-bush, now starts to walk away. So basically, we just play in the middle of the lane. We know that he's there. So as long as we don't get like CC uh, like by a Sona stun or something like that, which she doesn't even have because she's level four, uh, you know, we, there's no way we're gonna get caught. Ezreal has no CC. Sona has no CC because she's not yet level five, and there's nothing Kazit can really do in this situation. So he's just wasting a lot of time sitting in that bush. Here we hit everything onto the Sona. Sona dies uh, to my ulti, and Ezreal has to flash away. So here once again, we are going for the plates. Zix is coming in uh, for the gank, blasts himself over the wall, hits the bomb onto Ezreal, hits the E onto the Ezreal, shoots his ulti onto the Ezreal, Ezreal's left on 1 HP, flashes in for the auto onto the Ezreal. I also could have flashed in for the auto, but I was guessing that Ziggs was going to do it, which he did. So I didn't waste my flash here. And this also allows us to pick up the first tower of the game using uh, Ziggs uh, W. So really uh, strong. Uh, lead that we have. We finally were able to translate our advantage 
uh, into a kill and in, in fact two kills because Ziggs did come down on the roam so we did get uh, what we wanted sometimes it's really sad as MF when you are so dominant in the early game but you don't score any kills you do push them out of lane and they, they do get behind on like uh, goal and XP but eventually you know uh, they don't they, they still do relatively well because you didn't shut them down enough which is sort of uh, a commonality when it comes to MF because most people are not going to die to MF in lane because they know she does really high damage so most people are not going to contest her all that much. So here Dragon has just spawned. Uh, as you can see Ezreal and Sona are coming down for the Herald. We don't know where the jungler is. Jungler of course is Kha'Zix. Uh, Kha'Zix is completely missing. Caitlyn uh, who is the mid laner who is their mid laner is coming here. So here I'm going to finish off the Sona again who oversteps a little bit. Here, uh, the two ADCs are going after Seraphine. Seraphine tries to ult but doesn't really get it. Here, Kha'Zix and Garen are coming down. We already secured the dragon though. So here, we're just trying to hit whoever we can. Um, Kha'Zix gets a little bit of isolation damage. And here, Garen is trying to run me down. Here, I exhaust him and I flash away because I was afraid he's going to ult me. He does actually have ult here. So if I don't uh, flash away, he's probably just going to you know, use his ult and I'm going to just die right there. So here, you know, have to blow both summoners, but we're fine. Didn't actually manage to find an opportunity to out that fight because, um, you know, the fight was really split and people were not together. So this is not really the best match to to play. Um, MF. We the only real like good CC we have, which allows me to hit my ulti, is going to be, uh, Misfortune's ultimate. Not Misfortune. Seraphine's ultimate. So ideally, I can combo with Seraphine, uh, like what we did against the Sona, but on a larger group of people to you know, of course, get the ulti onto multiple people. So here, enemy is probably going to Herald. I'm just gonna hit back here to just clear the wave using my W for extra attack speed to clear the wave more quickly can see uh, from the glow around when Essence Reaver is active, so you can see here like, the Q does a lot of damage when it's enhanced with Essence Reaver. Of course, the LT is even better uh, to use. So here, um, just pu I pushed out the wave, I'm going to rotate. No one is actually at Herald, so Herald looks like a fight is going to happen at Herald really soon. Here I'm just rotating, uh, nothing too much happening here. Um, the the, uh, the, the uh, Seraphine LT goes to Narnia, uh, not, not sure what happened there. But anyways, we can see Garen is actually now pushing bot lane and everyone else is pretty much just in mid lane. We're getting ready to contest the Herald if there is even a fight that's going to actually happen there. Doesn't really look like uh, it doesn't really look like it at the moment. So here I'm just going to hit back to bot because uh, Garen is just free pushing and he's going to get a tower if no one does anything. No one is defending so I'm going to have to do it. Here you guys can see I'm resetting onto the minions that I'm just blasting Garen slowing him down. Um, again, resetting onto the minions and blasting Garen, bouncing off the minions onto the Garen, resetting onto the minions again. Uh, Garen is a really tanky chap, so I'm only able to get him down to half health. Um, huge uh, contest happening over at the Herald. Uh, team fight looks like it's imminent. Uh, using the strut passive, I'm, I'm able to make my way really, really quickly to the fight. And here I'm trying to blast wherever I can. Here I try to blast pe uh, people in my ulti over the wall. A lot of them are left really low, but I'm really low as well. So here I'm going to back off. Zix finishes off the kill and Gragas finishes off the kill as well. So two people did. Um, the Kha'Zix is going to be able to actually escape with his, with his life because of his invisibility. Here I'm able to complete my mana new Garen in the meantime manages to secure the tower while we are team fighting with our team. And here we're gonna hit back once again to the lane to defend against the Garen. Unfortunately we missed the Q this time, Garen's gonna just back off. And yeah, so not too much exciting things have happened so far. We're 2-0-3 here. So here I exhaust Garen. Garen tries to ult me, I flash away, cut him out, and help with the help of the Ziggs as well as the tower, we are able to actually kill off uh, the Garen. So really really close there, could have very easily died actually, but thankfully uh, that did not happen and we actually got the kill on him. So obviously we want to spam our spells to stack up our mana meme more quickly if we can. And here, looks like another fight is going to break out, so I'm going to quickly head over to mid lane to see if I can aid my team. In the meanwhile, Trinimer is actually uh, pushing the top lane, I, I assume, uh, with the help of the Herald, but he does end up dying to Caitlyn. So in the meanwhile, we're just going to farm. Uh, we're going to wait for Trindamir to actually take the red buff because at this point in time, there is already going to be the uh, buff sharing. So we don't want to steal the, the buff from Trindamir unless you know we have to. Uh, here, we're just going to clear out the Krugs. Next wave is here, so I'm just going to clear out the wave. Dragon is about 30 seconds away from spawning.
And yeah, so I expect Trindamir to be going for the red buff here. We should be in time to, of course, uh, pick up this red buff and go to the dragon. Here I'm just helping out, uh, helping him out to DPS the buff a little bit faster. And here he smites the buff. I'm able to get the buff. Probably, I don't know, probably shouldn't have smited there because dragon is coming up. But he does have a second smite coming up in a few seconds, so I guess it's fine. Here we can see Ezreal and Garen are in the top lane getting disturbed by Gragas. So we know that enemy team, or at least not... The whole enemy team is going to be here. Gragas actually picks up a kill onto Ezreal. And uh, here we are able to actually pick up the dragon. Here, uh, because dragon is done, there's no contest. I'm going to rotate over to mid lane to see if I can help my team. Uh, of course, there isn't really a fight breaking out because the enemy team is not going to be stupid enough to try to fight us. You know, 2v3 or 2v4. Now here Seraphine hits the ulti and I, I follow up with my ulti. I'm able to actually blast down both targets and we are able to pick up the kills. Now, unfortunately, we've run out of minions. So I end up tanking two huge um, tower shots, basically bringing me from full health to almost no health, uh, which is pretty funny. Anyways, the tower is pretty low, so what we're going to do is we're just going to finish off the tower. Turns out we don't even need to cancel our back because uh, the Ziggs is able to simply just bomb the tower, so could have actually just back there. So, but Anyways, we're going to just back here. Of course, we're going for a Sorala's Grudge. In my opinion, getting 3 items on Misfortune is more important than getting your boot item unless there's a lot of CC and you need QSS or there's a lot of assassins and you're dying to them and you need a stasis. Aside from that, I think leaving the boot enchant till later for MF especially is uh, definitely the way to go because getting your items are a lot more important. So here I probably have Sorala's Grudge which is why I'm, I, I'm backing after just doing one camp. I do have Sorala's Grudge. Again, I'm still trying to stack up. Uh, my mana mute to evolve it to mirror mana and that's when I'll have you know another huge power spike so here we're just you know at auto attacking the Garen a little bit we don't really do too much damage to him he tries to ult Seraphine fortunately Seraphine survives hits the ulti onto him and I'm able to finish off both uh, uh, the Garen as well as I believe it was the Sona with one ulti so really really nice ulti combo with me and Seraphine uh, which is exactly what we're looking for and with uh, three of them dead and Kha'Zix on 1 HP we are able to go to the Baron and just go ahead and do the Baron control warding the pit to ensure that there is no vision here uh, so, it, so that it cannot actually get stolen or anything like that and now we're able to secure the Baron and we're going to use it to push out mid lane a little bit before backing And it's gonna take the chickens. Uh, finally, we have our mana mute evolved into mirror mana already. We're six zero and four now, doing pretty decently well. My team is, of course, doing well on on the whole, so that kind of does make sense. So here, I'm just gonna farm the Krugs as well. And I'm finally gonna back. I presume to get my boot and boot enchant. Here, as you guys can see, we have the gluttonous grease with the stasis uh, completed. And we have an extra level of safety. Gragas picks up a double kill um, onto the Sona as well as the Kha'Zix. Uh, Garen dies as well. Here I'm going with the, the mid wave to push in mid lane. Uh, while the enemy team is busy defending top lane where there's four people, I'm you know just going to push in mid lane so we can secure hopefully two inhibitors at least. And they are able to secure the top lane inhibitor. And here I'm, I'm walking through to go to, to help my team. Um, Caitlyn doesn't do too much damage. I'm just gonna ult into her face with the help of the the uh, Cirella's grudge. She's gonna get slowed inside and because she actually rooted herself from her own ulti, we're actually able to finish her off when she actually could have just escaped there she just walked away. Uh, but she, you know, she got a little bit greedy for the kill onto Seraphine. Tried to ult her and ended up getting rooted uh, inside my ulti by her own ultimate. Anyways, here we're able to pretty much just destroy all of them. I go legendary. Look at how much damage I'm doing there. I'm gonna try to flash forward for the kill, but uh, Ziggs picks it up already. So here we, are, we should be able to just finish the game right here. And we do. So as usual, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll leave you guys with the stats as usual. And goodbye.